pour mes grands éclairables. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, as a Canadian today, I'm disappointed. This morning, the Prime Minister finally deigned to speak to the House of Commons about his decision to run roughshod over Canadian democracy by invoking the Emergencies Act all across Canada. He had a unique opportunity to justify his resorting to this extreme legislation to solve the crisis that he himself created. He failed. He failed to show that this legislation was necessary in the circumstances. But my question is, why is this government using such radical legislation just to protect the Prime Minister's own leadership? Leadership. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Monsieur le Mr. Speaker, this siege and the blockades are causing significant damage to our economy. The international community see, needs to see Canada as a safe place to invest and do business. The obstruction of the Ambassador Bridge interrupted trade worth $390 million a day. Those costs are real. They threaten both big and small businesses, and that is why we must take action. The Honourable Member for Megan Seclerable. Mr. Speaker, I think the Finance Minister should update her talking points. There is no longer any blockade in Windsor. That's over. We don't need the Emergencies Act there. It has been repeatedly said in the media that foreign groups are supporting the demonstrators in Ottawa, and uh, an intelligence expert stated that there was no evidence to support that allegation, not even any suspicious transactions. Why? To justify, is the Prime Minister basing his decision on facts that don't even exist, according to his own experts? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Business leaders in Canada know that these illegal blockades cannot go on, and they supported the necessary action our government has taken. Goldie Heyer, president of the Canada Business Council, said this week, we salute this decision as a step towards bringing the illegal blockades to an end all across the country and respect for the rule of law. That's precisely what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Megan Ciclerable. Mr. Speaker, I would repeat to her, there are no longer any blockades at the borders. Those have been resolved without the Emergencies Act. That's the reality. The Emergencies Act is a first this is the first time it's been invoked. The War Measures Act was only used three times for the World War I, World War II, and the October crisis. Last week, the Prime Minister said there was no need for further measures, and then all of a sudden, on Monday, he invoked the Emergencies Act. Bang! Can the government say what happened between Friday and Monday for the Prime Minister to flip-flop in such a short period of time? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. As we did during the NAFTA negotiations, our government will always do what is needed to protect our workers and the national interest. We defended Canada during the NAFTA negotiations, and now we're defending Canada, defending Canadians against these illegal blockades and occupation. That's what we must do, and that is what we will keep doing. Suri White Rock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister and the Emergency Preparedness Minister have repeatedly stated that foreign extremist financing is behind Canadian protests. At Public Safety Committee last week, Deputy Director of Intelligence for FinTrack, Barry McKillop, stated that there is no evidence to back up these claims. In fact, he stated, quote, there has not been a spike in suspicious transactions related to the protest, end quote. Why is the Prime Minister offside with Canada's national security experts? Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, I spoke yesterday with the head of FinTrack, and we are in close touch with that very important organization. The reality, her deputy, the reality, Mr. Speaker, is that FinTrack lacked the necessary authorities to oversee the new world of cryptocurrency and crowdsourcing and payment platforms. With these measures, Mr. Speaker, we have enhanced the authorities of FinTrack, and that is allowing us to stop the illegal funding of these illegal blockchains. Well, member for South Surrey, White Rock. Mr. Speaker, this morning the Prime Minister contradicted two of his ministers who had stated that the application of the Emergency Measures Act would be geographically located. The PM said it would apply to all of Canada. All the border crossings in BC, Alberta, Manitoba and Ontario have been cleared. The majority of Premiers clearly say this government overreach is interfering in their jurisdictions. When will the Prime Minister revoke this reckless decision and begin rebuilding the trust of Canadians? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. You know, Mr. Speaker, once upon a time, the Conservative Party was a responsible party that believed in defending the national economic interest. I know one Conservative minister who served in such a government, Perrin Beattie, who created the Emergencies Act. Mr. Beattie said today, said this week, that when he brought in the Emergencies Act, he knew that there would inevitably be future crises. I spoke to Mr. Beattie today, and I told him about the work our government is doing to defend the Canadian economy. The Honourable Member.